Hey everybody, thank you for stopping by my channel, A Square Pillow Isn't Square, a place where you will learn anything and everything you wanted to know about home deck sewing. The shades you see in the background are super simple roller shades. They don't need a lot of special equipment or tools. Really easy to make, versatile, casual, great for indoor or outdoor application. So today I'm going to show you how to make these great roll-up shades. Although all shade cords are dangerous and a strangulation risk for babies and small children, these are especially so. The cords not only hang down the side and are loose this way, but they're also on the front of the shade. So when the shade is lowered, these cords are just really easy to get to and grab. So I just want to have a disclaimer here that these are not something that you're going to want to use where there are small babies, children, or toddlers around. The instructions in this video are for unlined roll-up shades. If you would like to line your shades with a contrast fabric or the same fabric you're using on the front, or even use a standard drapery lining, um, and also if you're curious about indoor versus outdoor fabrics on a patio or porch like this, I take just a few minutes at the end of the video to talk about that if you're interested. You will need your fabric. You're going to need lift cord. Uh, I use Roman shade lift cord. I use 1.8 millimeter for this type of project. You'll need your thread. If this is an indoor shade, any all-purpose uh, sewing thread will work. If you're making an outdoor shade, I would look for an indoor-outdoor rated thread, or at the very least, get a 100% polyester thread. You will need some kind of a weight rod for the bottom of your shade. I just use a wooden dowel that I get at the Home Improvement Store. This one happens to be about 5 eighths of an inch uh, in diameter. You're also going to need a little piece of wood for the top of the shade. I use a one by one, which actually is just a piece of pine that measures about three quarters of an inch square. You'll need some screw eyes. As you can see, I use one and a quarter inch screw eyes. And you're also going to need some cup hooks. I use two inch cup hooks. These, as you can see, the opening's about an inch. You don't want to get cup hooks that are too small or you're going to have difficulty attaching your mounting board onto them. So these have worked really well for me. You will need a cord cleat, whatever kind or color works best for your decor. And the last thing is optional, but if you like the look of it, you can get either a plastic or a wooden cord tassel to finish off the ends of your cord. Okay, first I wanna talk about how big to make your shades for your window. The way that I determine the size is I first of all like to make sure none of these are wider than the width of fabric. I don't like to have seams in my roller shades. So a width of fabric easily fit on this window so this has a single panel. As I scan over here, this window was wider than a width and I decided to make two shades and there's no divider in the middle so I made two shades and the right one has a right draw and the left one has a left draw and they simply anchor down, as you can see, pretty inconspicuously on the right and left side. This big wall on the back is really big, and so I decided to make three shades on here, and on this left shade, I strung it for a left draw, on this middle shade, I strung it for a center draw, and the cord actually drops down and anchors right about there. And the right shade has a right draw on this side wall. This is a big, huge double wall. I did three wide shades, and again with a center draw. So just make sure you think about how to divide up your fabric so that you don't have to have seams and where you're going to anchor your cords. Also, if you're doing multiple shades next to each other, make sure you take a small deduction so you have a little gap in between them so that they don't rub up against each other. Once you've determined the finished width and length of your shade, you just have to add for your side seams and your top and bottom pocket. On my shade, I added four inches to my finished width because I did a double one inch hem 
on both of my side seams but you can do a double half inch or whatever you want to do if you're doing a contrast lined shade you're just going to add a total of one inch uh, two half inch seam allowances and you'll sew those right sides together and then um, flip it right side out for a knife edge shade and then for the length you simply have to figure that out depending on the size dowel that you got I used um, about a one and a half inch pocket for uh, my little dowel and I made about a one and three quarter inch pocket for my uh, for my one by one. One other quick tip that's kind of important to think about when you're determining the finished length of your shade, don't forget that when you slip these one by ones and dowels into your shade, that's going to make the shade just a little bit shorter because that'll create a little bit of take up from the width of the the wood. So if you really want to be precise, um, you might need to add a little bit of extra length to allow for length take up. All right, now just um, cut your one by one to fit and your dowel to fit and just slide those in the two pockets. And the next thing we're gonna do is talk about the screw eyes. On shades that use a single width of fabric, like these, you're only going to need two cup hooks and therefore two screw eyes on the top. If you are making your shade wider than a width of fabric or wider than about three and a half or four feet, you're going to want to go ahead and put uh, an additional cup hook and therefore screw eye on the top of your shade for center supports. The screw eyes on the bottom of the board are simply for guiding your lift cords. Okay, so how far in do you know where to put your screw eyes? As a general rule, I like to set in my uh, screw eyes that are for my cord guides about four to six inches from the edge. The loops that go around the shade and lift and lower it in the wind, or if the shade is lowered all the way, they can get a little loose and they just tend to kind of come off the side more easily if they're too close to the edge. So I, I like to set them in about four to six inches and then I'll put the guide for my lift cords, like if I want them to draw on the right or the left, I put those fairly close to the end of the board as you see here so that my cords are as close to the edge as they can be without risking being so close to the end of the board that I might split the wood or something. As far as the screw eyes on the top of the board that it suspends from, that it hangs from, you're going to want to put those exactly opposite the screw eyes that you installed for your cord guides. The easiest way i found to put the screw eyes in is I will take a punch and a hammer, I'll mark with a pencil where I want the screw eye to be, and I'll just give a sharp hammer with the punch to make a hole that goes right through the fabric and into the wood. And that gives a nice clean um, place for the screw eye to go. And once you've punched a nice hole, you can actually just get your screw eye started by hand and then use the, the punch um, for leverage. And it just makes it super easy to tighten those all the way down. I've found that if I use um, a drill bit, it can the fabric threads can get twisted around it and um, make quite a mess. So I just like to punch a hole through the fabric and wood and use that as my starter hole for my screw eyes. All right, how do you figure out how much lift cord you need and how long to cut your cord? Okay, so stringing these, these shades is really easy. So let me show you how they're strong and therefore how you determine how much cord that you need. Figure out the length of your shade when it's dropped. What you're going to do is you're going to add together the length from the top of the shade, down the back, and back up the front, and then over to wherever your draw is. On this example, I have a right draw, so my screw eye is way over to the right. So let's theoretically say this shade is four feet long and three feet wide. We're going to need four feet down the back, four more feet up the front, 
let's say the distance is about three feet over to this screw eye and then an additional foot or two for a drop. The length of this drop is just going to be um, whatever length you need to comfortably reach it when the shade is, is down. So this cord here is going to be a little bit longer than this cord. This cord you're going to have the same length. You're going to go all the way down the back, up the front, and over to the uh, drop side screw on and back down again. In this case, this is a center draw. We're going to start the same way where we're going to have a cord that comes down the back, up the front, over to our center draw, and down however long you need it to reach comfortably. And your second cord will be the exact same length and it's going to be strung the same way. You'll start by coming down the back, up the front, across to the center, through that screw eye, and back down again. And that's all there is to stringing these shades. And now just tie each string onto the screw eye at the top of the shade, like you see it here. And here's what this looks like when it's hanging up and strung. So if you look carefully, you can see where my string is tied to the top of my screw eyes. You can kind of just see that string at the base of the screw eyes there. And then the string, each, each string will drop down the back of the shade first, and then we'll come up the roll and up to the front and through the guides and down to the side where my draw cord is. And on the left side, you can see the same thing. The string comes down the back, up the front, and over to the guide. Uh, guide ring. So that's really all there is to it. Don't forget to add your cord tassel if you want that nice little finish detail. Figuring out where to put the cup hooks is really easy. Hold up the shade to where you want it to be and put a pencil through the screw eye and you know it's gonna a pencil mark through the screw, screw eye and you know it's gonna line up perfectly and then you just kind of go up and above. Sorry my my patio lights are in the way. You kind of just lean this back and line it up with your cup hooks. And roll it on forward and you've got your shade installed. It's really, really easy. And last but not least, install your cord cleat. You can do it horizontally, vertically, whatever works best for your space. That's all there is to making an unlined roll-up shade. If you have any questions, please ask them in the comments section below. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel. That way you'll get notified when I post new videos. And again, we've got about three minutes coming up um, if you have questions about lining and indoor versus outdoor fabrics. If you're using an interior fabric, make sure it's a nice, stable, tightly woven fabric, um, like any home deck drapery weight fabric would be. Keep in mind a couple things if you're going to line it. The pros of lining it are that you can simply do a knife edge on the sides and when you roll it up you have a nice contrast or matching roll that shows on the bottom and that can look really pretty. The con of lining these roll-up shades is that if you have them down to block sun like this one over here, the back fabric is going to be exposed to UV rate UV light all the time. Basically what's in here is not going to be exposed to the light but what's on the back is. And so um, whatever is exposed to the back is going to certainly have more fading and deterioration over time. So as you roll them up you may notice that there is um, changes in the way that this roll is going to look just from being exposed. So if you use something like just a plain cotton it's probably going to fade pretty quickly. Or if you use something that's just not very durable, it might de deteriorate from being exposed to the outside. And as you roll up your shade, you're going to see all that on the inside of the room. The other thing to think about is what this looks like on the outside. So let's say I decided I wanted to use this apple green as a contrast lining. It would look really cute on this shade. Um, and the thing you have to keep in mind is when the shade is already rolled all the way rolled down, you're going to have a big block of apple green showing from the exterior of your house. 
So if you don't like, if you don't want to see those big blocks of colors from the exterior of your house, keep in mind what that's going to look like as well. On these shades, on the um, outdoor shades, I prefer not to line them. Lining is not rated for outdoor use, and I always and only will use a good quality outdoor rated fabric for something that I'm using. Even in an indoor porch like this, the exposure to heat, humidity, sunlight, all that stuff, these are just not going to hold up at all if you don't use an outdoor rated fabric on your porch. The very best kind is Solution Dyed Acrylic. Um, Sunbrella makes one, uh, companies like that. Um, this one is an outdoor rated polyester fabric which has actually held up pretty well, although I will say um, that even polyester will mold over time, whereas solution dyed acrylic is less likely to do that. And on some of these shades that I have that are several years old, just from being rolled up all the time and the moisture that comes from rain and humidity, I am starting to see some small areas of, of grayish little speckles of mold on the back of these. So choose your fabric carefully if you're using these for exterior use.